Howdy bubs and welcome back. Today we're going to be jumping back into Game Maker to add in a score mechanic. So for us to be able to play our game and be able to see the score, we're going to have to of course have something that displays text, have something else that then tracks how we can get our score to increase. Now the simplest thing is just to keep track of whenever any of these boxes are deleted. We simply add one point to our score and then display the text somewhere on the screen so the player knows what their current score is. So let's go ahead and jump in. First I'm going to create a new object. This object I'm going to call obj underscore score. I'm going to have a create event and so this initializes uh, points so our points are equal to zero so we start off we have zero points simple easy then I'm going to introduce a new event type we're going to add not a uh, normal draw event but instead a draw GUI event the draw GUI event draws something such that it is locked into your current view screen Regardless of where you, the player, are located inside the room, the text will appear correctly based off of your camera, rather than based off of the room. So, this will display points. In here, I'm going to have draw underscore text, and we specify where the text is going to be. First, the X position. In my case, I want the text to be in the middle of the screen. So I'm going to get the GUI width. So whatever our screen size is, in this case, uh, whenever we have the little window, uh, the width is the full width of it. I want it to be centered, so I'm gonna divide by two. That covers our X value. For our Y value, I'm gonna give it 25. Let's just see how that looks. And then finally, what is it am I drawing? I'm going to have score, colon, space, close quotation mark, concatenated to, and then I'm going to cast into a string our current points. The draw GUI event is called every step, so every step that something happens in the game, this will draw it once again. And so if we have any updates to the points, it will get reflected as soon as that occurs. Let's go ahead and run it and see what it looks like right now. Of course, there is nothing currently here because I forgot the simplest part, place it inside the room. Um, again, we want to keep things organized. So we have a blocks layer, the player layer. I'm going to go ahead and create another layer. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, management or game control layer. That has to be one word, my bad. Uh, game control. The game control layer is going to have everything that is not directly related to playing the game but handles scoring and manipulating the game. So right now we are only going to have the score inside of this layer. In the future, you might have all your sound managers and other components, but for the time being, it'll just be our score. So now whenever we run it, we should have displayed in the top center of the screen our current score being zero. And if I have everything set up here, we'll see that nothing changes. Why is that? Because we currently don't have any mechanics put in place to detect that the score has increased. So let's go into our block and I can add a destroy event. The destroy event is called anytime an object is destroyed in the game. We already have in our ball object whenever it collides with the block to destroy it. So over in the block section I can add a destroy event that tells it to increase the score. This is automatically called whenever this object is destroyed. Here I can then say uh, referencing obj underscore score, I want to grab its points value. 
and then I'm going to increase it by some number. I'm going to say all of my blocks are worth just one point and just leave it at that. You need to make sure you reference the correct object name here for whatever you have managing your score because points does not exist inside the blocks. Points instead exist inside of the score object. And so this says from our score object grab its points variable and update it by increasing it by one. You can of course increase this value to whatever you'd like for your game. Now whenever I run this I should be able to see not only the score being present but whenever the ball bounces around it slowly increases. And there you go. And if I set all of these off to release, we should eventually get all 40 points. And there we go. A couple other mechanics I wanted to implement here is, uh, given that we have the ability to create additional balls to launch, I figured that we can have a mechanic that allows for us to charge the player points to launch a new ball. Let's go ahead and go into our player and where we press the space bar to create the new ball I can add in a conditional check. If points is greater than or equal to 5 then we create all I did was highlight this and hit tab to indent it over one. We then can create a new ball. But before we do that, I'm going to decrease my score by five. This will set it up so that way we always have to pay five in order to create a new ball but we don't start the game with five points so that means we can never create a new ball so I'm going to add one extra little bit here in a create event here I'm going to say uh, initialize values and starting ball is equal to false they have not yet used the starting ball. So in here I can say if starting ball uh, is false, so we have not used the starting ball, so using the not operator, or points is greater than or equal to 5, create a new starting ball, and then reduce the points value by five. Then we can update this section to instead say rather than points minus equals five to be uh, points is equal to the larger of the two values of either zero or the current points minus five. This will make sure that we don't get a negative five at the start whenever we first launch the ball but if we do have at least five or greater it will allow for us to subtract five points then I need to make sure that starting ball is now set equal to true. So that way it knows that there has been the starting ball used. So now with all of this it first creates and determines that there is no ball in play. If there is no ball in play, so not starting ball, then it allows for us to create it and then doesn't modify our points. Or if we have at least five points or more, it will then allow us to create a new ball, but this portion will come into effect and deduct five points from us. I forgot one little tidbit here to update. Uh, we have to do obj underscore score dot points and obj underscore score dot points. Otherwise, this portion will not work. Uh, because points does not exist inside of here, points exist inside of our score object. And now we should be good to go. 
in here, if I press spacebar, I'm allowed to create one ball, but if I keep pressing it, it doesn't work. I place this down. Now, after it hits and takes out five, I can press and create another one, but only one more, and you see my score was reduced a little bit. And so there we go. We now have some basic mechanic for allowing for the game to create new balls based off of the score, deduct points based off of creating new balls. You can of course modify the values however you want. Uh, in later sections I'm going to add my own mechanics on ways to have the balls get removed or deducted from the game. Maybe as with traditional breakout, once they touch the bottom of the screen, they are deleted. And so that then adds a little bit of a challenge for you as the player to try to address and avoid having too many tennis balls bouncing around the screen. Uh, otherwise, they might all fall down the bottom and then you lose points. The last little bit I wanted to add in, uh, for those of you that are interested in modifying the text and font uh, of your score, you can actually create a new font. And I can call this the score, or, uh, font underscore score. Uh, then you can specify what font you want. Again, you can play around with it however you see fit. Increase the size. And there we go, we've got something going. Over here in draw, we can then do draw set font. And I can specify I want to use my font score. You can also do draw set color, or you can do C underscore and any of these built in default colors. Again, keep in mind on wherever you place it inside your room and what the background is, as that might make it harder or easier to read what your text is. By default, it is white, uh, so it's C underscore white. You can change this to whatever you want beforehand and it'll display it the correct way. So just to show that off, we can see here, it is now the new font that I specified. It is slightly larger. And if I wanted to, I can also change the color. But otherwise, that's all I have for y'all today. If you have any questions or need any assistance in class, just let me know. Otherwise, everyone have a good one. I just wanted to say a thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Shout out to my bad bubs, my top five, my day ones. Y'all have always been there for me. Next up, my baby bubs, the next five. I always love y'all's support. And finally, for everyone else, any little bit helps. Thank you to all my basic bubs for supporting me along my journey. If you want to continue receiving notifications, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell button.